Happy New Year 2014. Today is New Year's Day and I'm doing something special today. I'm out in my shop making a video. It doesn't get any better than that. You are going to see me make this two-part yo-yo. This is the finished product and I think it works pretty good. So I could just do that all day long. It's almost as much fun as a top. I figure anybody can make a salad bowl, they just sit there. A yo-yo? Now that's something special. I have enjoyed producing these videos on making a one and two piece yo-yo. As I go forward with the second video, I will share with you what I've learned. Good morning. This is part two of my yo-yo series. The first yo-yo I did was a one piece yo-yo. I'm going to show you how I do a two-piece yo-yo. Now at this time I'm waiting for a digital scale and I won't put this video up until I get that because the whole idea behind a two-piece yo-yo in my opinion is so you can weigh each side and they're identical. It's all about balance and you can do all kinds of stuff on the yo-yo if you don't have it balanced from one side to the other you're going to have problems and this this is one of my two-piece yo-yos. It's too wide right here. Okay, It needs to be bigger in diameter and a little less wide because because of the width of this if it's out of balance it's really going to wobble and that makes a big difference. I mentioned in my first video that some of my yo-yos were awful. This is one of my awful yo-yos. It's a one-piece yo-yo. This groove I found out needs to be much narrower. This is really bad and it barely works so we're going to set that aside. In this video I'm going to do a yo-yo similar to this design. And I mentioned in the first video that there are three basic designs of yo-yos. Modified, Imperial, and a butterfly yo-yo. Which you can imagine looks kind of like butterfly wings. The string opening is very large. Now I'm going to take this yo-yo apart just to show you how it is assembled in, in the components of this yo-yo. Now what I've got in here is a hollow brass tube that the string winds around. That's the axle. Okay, And this is really nice because after you're done with this you can fine tune the uh, width of your string groove by just moving that back and forth and if you want to glue that with some CA glue or something. So I've got a uh, wooden part on each side. I got the brass tube in the center. Now I like this method because as I showed in my first video you can chuck this up between centers uh, and it's very accurate and then you can kind of put those together and look at them and fine tune them and then finally we're going to weigh each side of our yo-yo to make sure it's in balance. Now the shape of the top I'm making is similar to this one I'm showing you right now. It's going to be about two inches in diameter and I'm going to put my o-rings right on the crest of this part right here. It'll be a little bit different so first thing I need to do is true up this blank. I've got a piece of walnut chucked up in my lathe the first thing I've learned is I really enjoy making a two-piece yo-yo rather than a one-piece. I'm going to just take my parting tool and clean up each end. Now I'm going to use this chuck with these jaws and I've just lined my spigot up a little bit bigger than my jaws are and I'm going to just rechuck that. Now I have my piece of walnut chucked up into my two inch Nova Chuck jaws and I'm going to drill a hole much like I did in the first video. The drill bit I have in my my Jacobs Chuck is a 13 30 second drill bit and it matches the diameter of this hollow brass tube. Okay and that's what it looks like in my uh, my yo-yo and that's going to serve as my axle but I think it's more accurate if I do this all at once so I'm going to drill all the way through this blank with my drill. And I've got my lathe speed about 320 
RPM, not real fast. I don't need to be too fast on this. I have come to realize that drilling this hole will limit somewhat my future checking methods for this two-part yo-yo. Cam all the way through. There's my brass tube. It's a nice snug fit. And I'm going to bring my tailstock up. Not so much for safety, but I'm bringing it up for accuracy and stability so my yo-yo blank runs true. And I'm not going to over tighten this. I really don't need to. The next step is to lay this out. Now the diameter of my yo-yo is going to be a little over two inches. And right now I've got about two and a quarter inches set on this vernier caliper. I've got that marked on the side. You can't see that. Not terribly important. So I'm going to take my diameter down to that line. With the hole drilled straight through the two halves of this yo-yo, I have learned from other YouTube videos that a pen mandrel makes another good checking method. Out with my skew chisel. Now on this set of vernier calipers, I've got the final dimension of the width of my yo-yo marked on my calipers. So I'm going to just mark that in pencil. And right now that's a little bit big. I'm going to take that down, but I'm allowing for the, the center spot where my string will go and a little trimming at the end. Now as I trim off each end, I'm going to be very careful to make that absolutely perpendicular to the surface of the yo-yo here. I may change that profile later on, but right now I want this side and this side identical. So now I'm going to just part this off and then we're going to cut this in half with a parting tool. Now in my first video on the one piece yo-yo, I made a drive chuck and that's what I'm going to do right now so I can drive this walnut blank between centers, which I think is very accurate. And I've got boxes full of these little cutoffs, and some of them are pretty good. Some of them are just pretty cheap wood. But I'm gonna chuck this up into my uh, two inch jaws. And I'm gonna part that off because it's too long. Then I'm going to trim that down to fit this hole. Now, I'm starting to fit right about there. So this part right here is not making contact, so it's really not of any value. Now this doesn't have to be very long. I'm going to stop my lathe and see how that works. So you can see we're, we're starting to be very close to where we need to be. And I, that's just going to be a little burnish mark that will tell me where I need to be. Fine tuning on this. I'm going to make this shoulder as perpendicular as I can. Now I'm going to switch to my skew chisel and get in there short point. We'll see how we're doing here. Okay now, too loose. Not a big problem. That's going to be good once I jam that on there. Now what I did is I spritzed some water on there and that's going to help kind of glue that block in there. I'm going to bring my tailstock up. It's a little bit tight. I think it'll work. And the nice thing about this Powermatic lathe, it's got a really, really long quill. That gives me some room to get my banjo in there. Now I've got this chuck between my live center and basically a little uh, pin, if you will, and it's a, a drive block. It's 
it's not really a jam chuck unless I take my tailstock off. Now it's a jam chuck because it's just jammed on there. And I can do a little bit of profiling. I can take that blank and I can turn it 180 and work on the other side. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to part that in two. Now I'm going to kind of guess where the center of this is. I'm going to mark that with my pencil. I'm going to bring my tool rest up fairly close here. Now I've got the middle marked. I'm going to mark the right side and the left side of my yo-yo. I've got my dividers set. So there's the right side. There's the left side. Eventually after I part this off, I'm going to measure it on a digital scale and balance it that way. So now I'm going to keep trimming that off. I'm going to back my tail center off just enough to take off the remainder of that wood along the, along the center. Now I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to turn it around. By utilizing the hole through the blanks as a means of chucking the two halves, I can reverse the two pieces 180 degrees, sand, turn, remove and replace them easily while maintaining a true alignment. Now I can tell by the sound I'm getting close. I don't want that between centers as I part that off. That can be a little bit exciting. So take my tailstock away and hope this doesn't fly off. There we are. I've got my yo-yo blank parted in two. And I'm going to put these back together between centers. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that's nice and flat across there. And what I have is a piece of plywood with some sandpaper on it. So I'm going to just simply take this, sand that a bit to make sure I'm flat through there. And I'm getting there. What I do, if you take a pencil, and you can't see this, sorry. It's not that exciting. Mark up the, uh, the face of that. Do a little bit more sanding. Now you can't see it, but it's really, really nicely flattened off. I'll put a, put a ruler up there. So that's good. Now, I'm gonna put this between centers and start doing some profiling. The question is how do I go back and line those up and drive them together when that pin is flush with this left side of my yo-yo blank. How do I do that? Well, I'm simply going to bring my tailstock up with a cone center right there. And that will keep it lined up. You know, keep in mind there's not a lot of pressure here. I'm not taking big, big ferocious cuts. And I don't really want that all that tight, so I think that'll be good. I'm going to start working on the very center of my yo-yo and I've got a point tool that I use in thread chasing and I'm going to start defining the very center of that. I'm going to make sure my point tool is pointed down. If I have that pointed up, I'm going to get a catch. This assures me that my right side and my left side are going to be as identical as I can make them. Now I've seen different turners on the internet, on YouTube, making this center groove with a skew chisel. Now if you do this, you need to come in from this angle and then reverse your tool and come in from this angle because this combined angle of your cutting edge and the top of the, the skew chisel is different. If you, if you only come in from one direction, this is not going to be symmetrical in here.
And I've taken my sanding block and tried to level off each side of my yo-yo. The next thing I'm going to do is mark the groove where my o-ring is going to go. And I've got this leg of my caliper right in the center. I'll do the same thing over here. And I'm going to take this narrow parting tool and start to establish that groove for my o-ring. Now I'm probably down about an eighth of an inch or so, which is fairly deep. But I'm going to start profiling each side of my yo-yo, and that will decrease the diameter of that. As I mentioned in my first video, the O-ring is round in cross-section, but it doesn't really matter because you're not going to see the very bottom of that groove anyway. And I can get in there and widen that a little bit. And I will change the profile of that as we go along. I'm going to do a little profiling on this. And I'm going to just blend these two together. Now I've got one of my O-rings laid up against that groove and I can tell it's not wide enough. So, so I'm going to increase the size of that groove a bit. And I'm also going to undercut it a little bit so it really sits in there nicely. So there's my O-ring into the groove and that's looking pretty good. I'm going to reverse this and work on this other side. Now I have one side of my yo-yo on the way. I've got the groove pretty well established for my O-ring. I've got my other side chucked up in there and I've reversed it. Now it's running fairly true and I don't think I need to bring up my tailstock for support. But what I will do is occasionally I'll hold this other side of my yo-yo up there just to make sure my profiles are matching. Now keep in mind <clears throat> this is the outside of my yo-yo. I'm just using my parting tool to profile this little bit right here. Now I've trued these up as best I can. I've done a little bit of sanding. I've got an O-ring on this side of my yo-yo and I'm all ready to balance these out by measuring the weight. And that's my next step. Now recently I did a video on drying wood or drying bowls in a microwave and I used this old scale. It works okay for measuring shellac and things like that but I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to show you my new digital scale which measures grams and ounces it goes up to 100 grams or about three and a half ounces so it really doesn't measure anything very heavy but with our yo-yo project this will work just fine so I'm going to set that aside here's our scale and I did purchase this scale on Amazon we we're going to turn this on and measure our yo-yo parts so we got 16.91 grams with that side and we got 17.86. Now, a gram is about the weight of a paper clip. So there's a finish nail, and it weighs a little less than one gram. Our other blank weighs a little bit less than this. I'm going to take a little bit off of that, do some sanding, and we'll measure that again. Now I'm holding the two parts of my two-piece yo-yo, and I'm going to chuck this up into the groove I've got for the O-ring right here. So. I'm going to do a little sanding and I'm not going to, I'm not even going to put any masking tape on that. I don't think I need to. Don't need to be very tight on that. I'm 
I have done a little bit of sanding and finishing on these two yo-yo halves. So let's measure this one. 16.21 grams. We'll measure the other one. 15.26. So it's about a gram apart. And I'll do a little bit of sanding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to do a little sanding on the inside of my yo-yo part right here. I'm going to do a little sanding on the inside of that right here. And I'm going to just work that down. So I'll sand a little bit. I'll weigh it on the scale. And I will get back to you when they're equal in weight. Okay, now I've done a little bit of sanding and they're very close in weight. So I'm going to turn my scale on. There's number one, 1521. Number two, 1523. For me, that's really close enough. So uh, I'm going to put this yo-yo together. And you've already seen how I do that earlier in this video. So I'm going to put it together and hopefully we can spin it for you. So we have our completed yo-yo and I think it works pretty good. Now I put this together by simply putting in an equal number of my business cards on one side and the other so the inside would be parallel. Okay, let's just take this yo-yo for a spin and see how we do. Not bad. And that's all I want to do. I just want it to go down and up. Pretty boring, but it works really nice. Maybe I'll work on that sleeper. So thanks for tuning in. Until next time, this is the Wyoming Woodturner.